Welcome to our program. I'm John Inkerberg. Thanks for joining me. Our topic is, why are many scientists today rejecting the standard textbook theory of evolution known as neo-Darwinism? And where did the problems with the contemporary evolutionary theory begin? For the last few weeks, we've been looking at the theory of evolution and the scientific problems confronting it with scientist and philosopher Dr. Stephen Meyer. Dr. Meyer is a former geophysicist who received his PhD in the philosophy of science from Cambridge University. And he's written two best-selling books, Signature in the Cell and Darwin's Doubt. Dr. Meyer, we're glad that you're here. And today I want to begin with a clip from Illustra Media's beautiful documentary movie, Darwin's Dilemma, which will give you an idea of just how sudden the Cambrian explosion of animals on the Earth was. I want you to watch. According to standard estimates, almost 90% of the Earth's history took place during the Precambrian geological period. While our knowledge of the Precambrian is far from comprehensive, most textbook accounts include a similar chronology and chain of events. About three and a half billion years ago, primitive life first appeared on Earth in the form of single-celled bacteria. Over time, these cells gathered into clusters to form blue-green algae that floated on the surface of the oceans. Life changed very little for more than three billion years. Then on the threshold of the Cambrian period, evidence of multicelled organisms first appears in the fossil record. There is also evidence that near the end of the Precambrian, the oceans were inhabited by jellyfish, sponges, and the mysterious Ediacaran fauna. If you go to immediately before the Cambrian, then actually you find something extremely puzzling because you get large organisms, large fossils, and these are called the Ediacaran assemblages, and they have been one of the great headaches for paleobiology and also for evolutionary biology. Why? Well, because basically some look like animals, but other ones don't look like animals at all. Some of them look like air mattresses, quilted air mattresses. Others look like a frond. They're not plants, but they kind of have that appearance. Whether the Ediacarans were actually animals or plants is still uncertain. But late in the Precambrian, they disappeared from the Earth. Then long after their extinction, everything changed in a geological instant. In a spectacular burst of creativity, the basic blueprints for most of the animal kingdom exploded into being. And for the first time, Biologically complex structures like compound eyes, spinal cords, articulated limbs and skeletons appeared on Earth. To understand the speed of the Cambrian explosion, imagine the history of life compressed into a single day. Since Darwin, excavations on every continent have revealed the magnitude of the explosion of life an event that was clearly global in scope. You know, Stephen, what we just watched is astonishing, all right? Why is the explosion of animal fossils on Earth in the Cambrian time period such a challenge to Darwin's theory of how life originated? The abrupt appearance of animal life in the Cambrian period is really surprising for a couple of reasons. First, it takes such a small percentage of the total of, the, of geological history. Uh, there is so much innovation that takes place in such a small fraction of time that that's really unexpected. You'd, you'd expect on a Darwinian basis that you'd have the mechanism of natural selection, random mutation, gradually producing little incremental changes, and there'd be a kind of a steady increase in complexity over time. But instead we see a very discontinuous or discrete increase, and that increase is confined to a very small percentage of geologic time. 
Now, we might be tempted to think, well, yeah, but still, that's uh, the Cambrian explosion is roughly a 10 million year event. That's a lot of time. It's certainly a lot of time on the scale of human history. But what uh, I think uh, few of us uh, realize or recognize is that, uh, that 10 million years is actually a blink of an eye biologically as well. It's a small amount of time in relation to the amount of time that the mutation natural selection mechanism needs to work. Um, there's, a, there's a branch of evolutionary theory known as uh, population genetics, and it's a very mathematical uh, branch of biology in which biologists are able to calculate what they call waiting times. This is the amount of time that you would expect for a given evolutionary change to take place. And, and biologists can make these calculations if they know something about the mutation rate, the uh, generation time, the size of the populations of the different organisms that are involved. And recent calculations that have been made in the field of population genetics are showing that if you need more than a few coordinated mutations, the waiting times blow up beyond uh, hundreds of millions of years. And so a 10 million year window uh, is a blink of the eye biologically. It's not enough time even to generate a few coordinated mutations, let alone the, the origin of these extraordinarily complex animals. Trilobites, for example, had compound eyes that actually can be seen in, in the fossil uh, remains of these animals. These are exquisitely complex uh, 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 forms of visual apparatus that are preserved in the fossil record, and they arise, again, very abruptly and within this 10, 5 million year window. And uh, this is uh, re really just not nearly enough time for natural selection mutation to do its work. So it's very surprising and a big challenge to the creative power of the natural selection mechanism. Yeah, and the mystery only gets deeper as new discoveries are coming in. And we're going to take them in this next clip to China, where just an incredible discovery was found. And what's incredible about this, folks, is that they found older fossils, and they found that these older fossils were more anatomically complex. I want you to watch this clip. Most recently, several discoveries in southern China have fascinated science and deepened the Cambrian mystery. In 1984, one of the most important finds in the history of paleontology was made outside a small town in China's Yunnan province. While surveying this mountain near Chenjiang, Ho Xian Guan unearthed Cambrian fossils older, more diverse, and better preserved than any ever discovered. The condition of the Chenjiang fossils was so remarkable, Ho said, it appeared as if the animals were alive on the wet surface of the mudstone. The fossils they've collected, I mean, first of all, they're stunning. I mean, they're really beautiful to look at. They're brightly colored, stained with iron and probably other kinds of minerals. So they're kind of golden looking or kind of reddish. And they really stand out from the rather tan colored background of the rocks and they're just beautiful so aesthetically they're wonderful many of them are soft bodied no hard parts no skeletons no shells just soft bodied and yet they're exquisitely preserved so you can see the cambrian explosion in greater detail than you can anywhere else in the world in the early 1990s reports of the Chinese fossils were released to the rest of the world. At the University of San Francisco, marine biologist Paul Chien followed the news. What drew my attention was, in fact, a couple articles published in People's Daily, the uh, official paper from the Communist Party in China, uh, announced uh, that the uh, uh, Chengjiang fossils um, drew the attention of scientists worldwide. People Daily reported that this find actually challenges the theory of Darwin's evolution. Since 1996, Paul Qian has made several trips to southern China to conduct his own investigations. The Cambrian explosion does challenge the traditional idea of gradual evolution of animals. Uh, because they all seem to appear all of a sudden 
And the problem is, how do we explain it? Paleontologists have determined that the Chinese fossils were older than those excavated at the Burgess Shale. Yet anatomically, they were often even more complex. This discovery also confirmed that previous estimates of an explosion lasting 20 to 40 million years were much too long. The time period that we figured it took the animals to be established in the ocean in those days took probably 10 million, 5 million years. So uh, this is truly an explosive event in the scientific terms. What we are seeing is a quantum jump. And this quantum jump has no explanation. As the interval of the Cambrian explosion is compressed, in other words, as the time available shrinks, the challenge to evolutionary theory grows because the differences in form that have to be constructed very rapidly are much more dramatic. It's going to pose a real and I think fundamental challenge to evolutionary mechanisms. From what I saw, the Chinese scientific community as a whole seem to be rather progressive around this. They are convinced by the evidence that the Cambrian explosion is real. And, and they see it's a challenge to, to the Darwinian theory. And they are honest about it. Therefore, they are thinking about how to explain this outside of the Darwinian thoughts.